In this video you will learn how to create a colorful flake effect. For this we will first use an updated car paint shader workflow, then split up reflections in separate channels and finally offset those channels to blend everything together again to reach the final result. So in this video here we're going to be building some flaky car paint shader and specifically I'm talking about some colorful flakes. So you can see here around those highlights we have these kind of like colorful flakes here accumulating and that's an effect that you can often see with these type of shaders. So the flakes they don't really have a constant color, they are shifting the colors a little bit and by this you can get a much more realistic and interesting result. As usual, you can always find all of my scene files from all of my videos on my Patreon together with a full course on car rendering. So you can check out this if that's interesting for you. Other than that, let's just jump in and see how this shader here is built. So here you can see our finished car paint shader and this one here would be the shading network for that. And as you can see, it's not extremely complex, but there are certain kind of elements to it and most of them are responsible for this colored flaky effect in here. You can build a much simpler car paint shader using a much simpler node setup and that's exactly what we're gonna be building first. So for this, let's open here a new view. And then here I have just a standard gray material prepared already, which we're gonna assign here to our shading dummy. And now let's start from scratch to build a simple car paint shader. You might have already seen my previous video about car paint shaders and that was done with a much earlier version of V-Ray. So a lot of stuff has changed since then and I also want to use the chance here in this video to kind of simplify and update my workflow. Nonetheless, you can check it out because this one goes much more into the theory of car paint shaders in general and there's lots of additional useful information in there. So as a first step, let's add some simple color in here and this we can just do over this simple color picker. But instead of using this, I will be separating that into a separate node in here. Just gonna be pasting in this color which I pre-selected earlier and then connect this into our diffuse slot. And I did this because later on then I have the option to pipe this part here of the shader into other elements. So that's why it makes sense to oftentimes split this up and not use this direct selector in here. Now we can increase the reflectivity to a value of one and also lower here the glossiness to a value of 0.6, for example, because we want to be building a rougher base coat here first. So let's now deal with the metalness of our shader. And at the moment it's set to zero. That means we have a non-metallic material. And if I increase this here to a value of one, then the appearance will change. What's happening now is that here our color is being used to tint our specular reflections. And then at the same time, our diffuse reflections are completely black in here, so there's nothing showing up. And if we have a metalness of zero, then you can see that our specular reflections, they don't get tinted at all anymore, they just show here our environment color. And then at the same time, we have a lot of diffuse reflections here in our lighting element. So that's basically how the two different shaders here differentiate each other. And I said normally it should be either metallic or a dielectric material. In our case here we have an exception because we want to simulate a kind of base code that has certain kind of dielectric elements but also a lot of metallic elements to it. And for that let's use here a metalness of 0.75. So our diffuse lighting pass is not completely black and at the same time we're kind of like tinting here our reflections get like a good and believable result in here. So now the only thing we have to do is to add a clear coat on top and this we can easily do in the later versions of the V-Ray material by using this code parameters and just increase the code amount to a value of one in here for example. And now you can see we have this kind of very clear and crisp reflection here over our more diffuse base coat. And by this, I think we can already get a quite nice result in here. So as a next step, let's try to give our clear coat some subtle imperfections, because at the moment you can see those highlights, they are crystal clear. And that's not really what happens in reality. In reality, the clear coat has some kind of small bumps and imperfections. So for this, let's add here a noise map. And then in the noise map, let's go in and switch this type here to fractal. And then we can also decrease the size, for example, to a value of one and increase the levels. 
And of course, at the moment, this would be way too strong. So let's dial down the overall effect. Let's use here a value of one, for example. And now you can see those highlights. They are kind of broken up now a little bit. We don't have these like completely circular highlights anymore. And like this overall, it just looks a little bit more realistic. So now would be the time that we could add some flakes. And for starters, let's just add some very simple non-colored flakes. And this you can easily do by using the bump map here of our base code. And let's for that disable here the clear code. Let's reduce this value to zero so that we only see the base code. And then inside here, we can add a normal map. And then in the normal map, let's add a new bitmap. And let's just choose here this normal map for flakes. So once I add this in, you can see once I zoom in that now here our base code will become a little bit more rough. We will have this kind of like nice breakup which are happening here. And that's because we have this kind of normal map flake texture in here. So we can go in and decrease the filter multiplier to the minimum value because normally for the flakes, I don't really like to have them filtered in any way. And now we can also go and apply here a triplanar texture to just define here the size for our flakes. Let's choose, for example, a value of 100. Like this, the flakes here become much bigger than they were originally. And let's just go back and see how the whole thing here now looks like. So as you can see, we have this kind of like flaky pattern that appears here in those highlights. And if we want to reduce that, we can decrease here the bump, for example, we can choose a much more subtle pattern here so that it doesn't really show up in those parts in here. But for now, let's use here a value of 25 and then also this size. Normally, I think it should be a little bit smaller, but I think like this for the purpose of this video, you will be easier to see the flakes in here. So as you can see, the flakes now are not colored at all. And that's what we're going to be dealing with in the next step. But first, let's try to bring back here our code again so that we can see both of those layers here working together. And as you can see, we have this like clear code here on top and then this flaky base code here to get, I think, already a quite nice looking car paint material. So now we have already some nice shader going on with these flakes here that appear around the highlights. But if you want to go the extra mile, we can try to colorize these flakes here a little bit so that they all have some kind of random U values because at the moment you can see they all have exactly the same U value. They just differentiate in brightness basically. So let's try to build a shader that allows us to colorize these flakes here a little bit. So for this, the idea is to basically split up our reflections into three different channels. In this case, I will take red, green, and blue. And I built already some simple dummy material that basically does exactly that. So this one just has the color set to pure red, this one to green, and then this one here to blue. And then the reflection is 100% and also the metalness is set to one. So now let's check out how each of those shader here looks like by itself. So here we have our red reflection, we have our green reflection, and then we also have our blue reflection. And now I want to combine them together back into one shader and then also kind of neutralize them so that we have a neutral reflection. Then the idea is to basically offset each of those channels here slightly and by this introduce some kind of color variations. So let's first combine them by using a new blend material. Let's take here the red as our base material and then the green into our first coat and apply this shader here. And you can see that now we're basically mixing the red and the green reflection. And at the moment we do this with a 50% value in here. You can use the slider to switch between the green and the red reflections and anything that's in between produces a blend between those two different shaders. So instead of using this color picker in here, let's put this all the way to black and instead use here a color because then we can use this color here and set that all the way to pure white. So that stands for 100%. And now we can dial in the blend amount basically here using this numeric values. So I will put this value here to 50%. So the red and green channel is being mixed 50%. And now we can add here our blue channel and then also add here this 
color again and this one here will be mixed 33.33% so exactly a third and then also we have to put this value here to black so that we're not mixing that with this value here again and then you can see we have a completely neutral reflection here. So now that we found a way to mix those shaders here back together into one shader again with a neutral reflection, let's work on the individual shaders and let's just slightly produce different results for each of them. And for this, let's first introduce the flakes. I will just take here the normal map and I will just duplicate that, but keeping the input connections here intact. So we're using the same flakes texture and also the same triplanar texture. And then let's map this into the bump amount here of this material. And you can see that we now have these flakes appearing. But instead of using the same values that I used in here, I will just define here to flip the red channel for this one. Then I will duplicate this node. And here I will flip the green channel and pipe that into my green reflections and then here I will take this and swap the red and the green channel and then put this also into the bump map of this blue material. So the result is that we use the same flake texture here but we always interpret it slightly differently by flipping the channels in here and then this will give a slightly different result for each of those different shaders and now if we apply here our blended material again, you can see that now we have some random colored flakes which are appearing in here. So that's already good for a start, but we now want to be able to control the exact appearance here of this shader. And for this, I want to control here the glossiness and the bump map intensity. And instead of doing this for each of those shaders here separately, let's do that with controller. So we will add a new float and then Bezier float controller. Let me just zoom in here slightly. So this one here will be our glossiness. And then let's duplicate this. And then this one here will be our bump intensity. And now let's define here a value. For example, let's choose a value of one. And then let's pipe that into the reflection glossiness for the red, for the green, and also for the blue shader in here. Once we did this, we can then define the glossiness of all of those three shaders here together. For example, I can choose a glossiness of 0.5. You can see all of those shaders here should update in a second. Let's use a glossiness of 0.75 here. And I think like this, we can get a much nicer result. And now we can also use the same workflow using the bump intensity. So let's use that to connect that into our red shaders bump map multiplier, which can be found here. And then I will do the same for the green material and then also the same for the blue material in here. So bump map multiplier. And now I can switch here to different values. For example, I can choose a value of 100 and then the bump map will be basically set for each of those shaders in here. In this case, let's choose a value of 50. So we have a glossiness of 0.75 and a value of 50 for the normal map intensity. And then you can get this kind of result in here where we have all of these different colored flakes here mixed together and giving us a quite nice result already. So now I just tidied up this graph here a little bit. And what we have now is already quite nice because we have these kind of like colorful flakes which are appearing in the highlight areas. But what we're missing is our original color, which we want to also introduce because at the moment it just looks like basically a silver base coat with some very strong colored flakes in here. So in order to change that, let's try to mix in also this color value in here. So for that, I will just go into the shaders here and I will just pipe the color values into the diffuse slots in here. And once we do this, we can see that now, of course, all of those will become the same color that what we set up in here. And now, of course, we're losing this appearance of the different kind of colors which are appearing in here. So we need to kind of go into each of those shaders and reduce here this blend amount so that basically this color in here is mixed with our original colors that we set here in the shader. So for this, we can easily just take here this controller and duplicate that again. 
And then let's connect that into each of those different materials and set here the blend amount for the diffuse value. But first let's rename that so that we know what it is. Let's call this here tint. And then let's connect that into the diffuse amount value. So let's connect that here and choose the diffuse map multiplier and do the same thing for this material here again. So diffuse map multiplier and then also for the blue one diffuse map multiplier. At the moment set to a value of 100 but now we can reduce that for example to a value of 50%. So you can see this value here now gets set to 50 for each of those different shaders and now we have here our base tinting appearing with these kind of colored flakes which also appear now in our highlight areas. So now all we have to do is blend here our two different materials together. So we have our original car paint with the nut colored flakes. Let me just add a new V-Ray blend material. And let's put this one here as the base and then assign this to our shading dummy. And we also want to put this value here to black and then also introduce this color value in here. So that at the moment, if I connect it now like this, I put the flakes inside here, the code material. We will see only the flakes, so we will only see this shader. But let's choose, for example, a value of 35%. And now we're basically blending this shader and this shader here together. And you can see that now we have these kind of like clear code reflections from our base shader. And also additionally here, these flakes from our flake material, which we just built. So now it's just a question of choosing the size here for the flakes. I said I left that on purpose a little bit big in the beginning. So let's reduce that. Let's put that to a value of 50 centimeters here, for example, so that we get some smaller flakes appearing here and that we don't really have this very obvious effect. So now let's render here the whole thing. And once the denoiser here kicks in, you will see that we have these kind of like nice flakes which are appearing here in our highlights, which have these kind of random color variations and overall give us a much more nice and believable result for our car paint shader. So as usual, you can find always all of my scene files on my Patreon together with a whole course on car rendering and a lot of other additional goodies. So you can check this out if that has any additional value for you. Otherwise, see you in the next tutorial. Take care and see you soon.